hey guys here to this side and uh, I hope that you all are doing fantastic uh, in this video I'm going to talk about data profiling so there are various aspects about data profiling why do we need data profiling within ETL testing what is data profiling and when do we do the data profiling different type of data profiling that we do right everything about that we are going to do it and um, I have done this I mean this video is structured in question answer format so that it can actually help you um, get a better understanding right so let's get started then uh, the first question what is data profiling right so it's basically the process of verifying the source and target data just to understand what kind of data it is basically the study of the source and target data is nothing but the data profiling first of all right study is the first thing yeah and then second one what is the purpose of the data profiling so the purpose is very simple that uh, we want to understand whether there is a consistency within the data there is accuracy within the data and also there is a cleanliness of the data right there are the three aspects that we do here and um, it's basically before processing and after processing within the ETL yes so that's about the purpose of data profiling and what it does basically it helps you understand um, the source data structure for example you have the source systems multiple source systems you would like to understand what kind of source it is what kind of data it is containing right and uh, is there any major uh, data quality issue um, before we actually start the ETL processing so it's basically uh, when you perform the uh, data profiling at the source which means you are ensuring that uh, there is no major problem with regards to data quality in the source before actually you start processing within the ETL yeah and uh, that is the same thing uh, that basically we want to make sure that the after ETL is processed the target system wherever it is loaded is also not having the major data quality issue right that's the whole point of view because understanding the data is most important aspect right so this is actually coming in the data profiling right now let's look at the second question what exactly is done under data profiling so look at this there are three things that we do right first thing is we basically perform the structure analysis right structure analysis means basically you have the source systems for example other other, other target as well right um, so what we do you basically see that what kind of data each of these columns are having right so there will be multiple columns within uh, the source itself right within the, the data that we have we want to understand what is the data type and what is the format as well probably the best example that you can see the structure is basically try to see what is the data type for example higher date is one of the column in one of the field probably yes um, one of the table yeah let's say employee table we have the higher date and uh, that format is dd mm yy yy yes this format can also be mm dd yy yy or yy dd mm anything any can any format can be of the date right the date can be of any format yeah now when you actually perform the data profiling you have to make sure that okay this is actually the data profiling basically you understand it yes so this is the first thing we actually perform the structure analysis so that we can also align it based on our target system yeah second one the content analysis so when you have the data right um, you also would like to check whether the data is having any duplicate or do we have uh, any null values or how many number of rows etc so this is basically content analysis right not of the structure because this the first one is basically mostly talking about the structure of the table or the data and etc right more of a metadata analysis but this is basically the content or the data analysis that's what we do actually what we contain within that particular uh, table or wherever you are storing right so that is a content analysis second uh, third one relationship right this is also uh, coming this also comes under data profiling because we want to make sure there is a foreign key and primary key constraint intact because there will be um, e even in the data warehousing you know right there is a there is a fact and dimension table every fact table is actually referring to the primary key within a dimension table right so that's how we have the foreign key and primary key constraint there as well right so those kind of constraints also we need to make sure so there are three things that we do analysis and as I said it's more of an analy analyzing the data how it is basically so that basically captures any kind of 
problems within that right so do you see that if we are able to actually um, understand or we are able to sort out sort out all of these things then if i run my etl job then it makes 100 percent sense right otherwise you will be having a lot of problems with regards to data with regards to content duplicates nulls etc before we even we start our etl job we actually would like to do this right it's not only before etl i'll, I'll come back to the next question when and all we do the data profiling so let's look at the second third one how is data profiling performed first of all uh, guys this is very very important question right because we know that what we have to do we have to study it we have to understand the data but what exactly how do we do that first thing is manually check it check by running the sql query right if you have probably the source and target the relational database then you, you are good to run the sql queries because you are comfortable with writing uh, running the queries you can do various checks like duplicate checks null value checks maybe uh, all these constant checks etc why not right you can do all of these checks using the sql queries uh, but uh, in reality we don't have the relational database all the time right we have the wide variety of data sources and uh, the sources that i can I, you can see here is other data sources let's say flat file right different type of file let's say json file csv file right or uh, maybe parquet file all the type of different files are there and um, we cannot really run the like manually we don't know how to basically verify it right or the cloud data coming from the cloud maybe from the aws azure linux servers so there are the different type of sources which are not actually relational databases they are actually uh, different nature right so that's the reason um, verifying manually uh, the data profiling is very cumbersome task and probably you cannot ensure that you are doing it fully 100 percent right that's the reason we can actually the second type of uh, second way how we can do it basically the custom automated tools using python scripts plus pandas this is a very very um, powerful combination you can actually write because pandas is a library that can actually give you ability to perform any kind of checks basically it has a very rich library so you can actually choose this and also you can choose the pytest for data validation and um, sql connector so it's basically i would say that it's a custom automated tool that you can build using the python basically right and this is the best thing that you can do using the data profiling yes obviously you have to learn all of this skills and then you can build it to your own the third way uh, basically the licensed automated tool and uh, this is generally the companies will not prefer to go for because uh, it costs really really hefty amount right so like IBM Infosphere, Informatica, Data Quality these tools are really really costly right and that's the reason everyone cannot afford this very very rare companies who are really the top tier companies they can actually afford these licensed tools for data profiling otherwise uh, majority of the tool uh, majority of the people actually go either for manual which is again uh, like not completed you cannot actually say 100 percent on and also the custom automated you can build your own test automation framework where you can actually include the data profiling part as well yes all right now let's look at the fourth question when can data profiling be performed right this is very very important thing now people just say think that okay we do the data profiling just before running the ETL test because we want to make sure our data that we are actually feeding into ETL process is good right no it's not like that we do the data profiling at various stages right because see there could be possibility even after you are performing the data profiling let's say manually you are profiling right P performing it there is a chances that there are some of the issues that might slip uh, slip right from there and then you again have to basically catch it into the next stage right that's why before etl study the source and identify any data quality issue in the source right this is the first thing ideally we should be capturing everything but this is not how practically it happens right so the next place where you can actually catch these issues or the data profiling you can perform is during the etl design itself right validate the etl transformation logic and this is mostly the job of the developers right they will also perform this and uh, since developers can write some good amount of code they can actually do it by your their unit testing or uh, or 
like they can do it while designing the ETL jobs itself, right? Now, the first one and uh, the second one, right? The first one and the last one is primarily done by the testing, tester people, right? So like you as a test engineer, you do that automation test engineer, validate the source and target, right? So after loading also, we have to do this. And this is also something like um, on top of your general normal testing that you perform, right? The data validation testing, you can also perform this data profiling things, right? And uh, many times um, people um, refer it as a data quality, but it's data quality is just a subset of data profiling because within the data profiling, there are a lot of other checks that comes, right? So yeah, so there are the three stages. That's where we do. And uh, I just wanted to cover all of these things for all of you so that you understand next time when you ever, whenever you go for interview, people might ask you what is data profiling. You should be very comfortable to answer this question. So these four questions, please note this somewhere and revise it again and again. This I'm, I'm sure that this is going to be giving a very good understanding. And uh, I hope that this has added some good value to your knowledge base. And um, do subscribe this channel if you're visiting first time and uh, also share with your friends. This channel has a lot of great content, guys. And um, like um, uh, this whole purpose of this channel is to spread the knowledge to the people who might need it really, right? And uh, yeah, I think um, that's all I wanted to cover. I'll see you soon with another video. Until then, we meet next time. Happy learning. God bless you. Bye. Take care.